So you want to plant daffodils and add them to your garden. But there's so much confusing information out there. What to do, what not to do, what do you add to the soil first, or do you even have to? I'm Laura, and welcome to Garden Sanity. And my goal today is to simplify everything you need to know about planting daffodils, make it easy as possible, and show you actually what little you need to do to actually get them in the ground. So in this video, I'll be covering the following topics. Exactly when to plant your daffodils in the fall. What the average temperature should be. Tools you can use for planting bulbs. Soil amendments and fertilizers. Do you need them? Planting the right end facing up. Does it matter? And how do you know which way your daffodils will face when blooming? If you want to jump to a certain topic straight away in this video, just go below in the description area to the chapter headings and you can just click directly on the section you're interested in. All right, let's get started. So the time to plant daffodils is in the fall. In the Northern Hemisphere, that's going to be usually October or November, even into December, depending upon your zone and also, more importantly, how the weather has been. Because what's most important to remember is to wait until the ground is cooler, around 55 degrees for your soil temperature. And this usually happens once your nights are around 40 to 50 degrees for about two weeks in length. That being said, just make sure you get them into the ground before it freezes. Now the past two years, I've planted my daffodils in December, and that's because we've had such warm falls here in Zone 7, Southern New Jersey. This year, I hope to get them in next week, which would be about mid-November. However, I gotta wait because this past week, early this week, we had temperatures that were in the mid-70s. This morning, it was 44. <laughs> so our weather's been wacky, and that's why you gotta kinda pay attention. Once your weather's consistently cool at night, you should be good to go. So first I'm going to talk about the tools that I personally use, and then I'm going to show you two other tools that I don't use, I've tried them, but they're really good and handy to use, so I'm including those as well. And don't worry about where to find all this info. In the description area below, I'll have links to everything so you can check them all out for yourself. So the first thing you're going to want to use are gardening gloves, and these serve two purposes. One, they keep your hands warm if it's cool or cold out, so that's always a good thing. And two, they're going to just make it very easy to grip the bulb, get it in the ground. Sometimes the bulbs can be slippery with the sort of onion peel type of coating on the outside. It's, it can be kind of slippery, so use gardening gloves. The next thing is a garden kneeler bench, and this is great for staying off the cold ground, and it also makes it much easier to plant the bulbs versus bending over. You can kneel on it, you can lean on it, you can hold onto the sides to lean in and lean pretty far while you're using this. It's really handy. Next is my favorite garden tool called a snake tongue trowel. This is a great bulb planting tool because this can dig holes, it has a sharp end to cut through roots, and it can work the soil a bit too. Next is a small petite shovel, and this helps for digging larger holes where you want to plant groups of bulbs all together for a more naturalized look or a bouquet type of display. And if you're taller, you can use a regular size shovel. I'm short, so I use this petite one. It's another really handy tool to have. Chicken grit. This has two uses, and both are really essential for my garden. First, it repels digging from animals like squirrels and chipmunks, as they don't like it apparently when their claws touch the stones. And seeing any freshly dug up garden soil is something they always seem to notice. But I've got a slight trick for this. What I do is I take the chicken grit and I sprinkle it around the bulb before I cover it up in the hole. And then, once the soil's all tapped out and even, I sprinkle more chicken grit on the soil and then cover it up with mulch, even some shredded leaves. So it looks so natural that maybe, just maybe, the squirrels and chipmunks don't even think to look there. The second reason that I like chicken grit is because it helps with poor drainage. You can add chicken grit into the planting holes and it doesn't affect the bulb in any way. So you can have the bulb sit on some chicken grit so it's not sitting actually in water if you have poorer drainage. Again, this helps if you don't have good drainage. Otherwise, in areas of the gardens where my drainage is good, I don't even need it. So next I wanna share two tools that I've tried and don't personally use. However, they're both really good tools if you wanna use them. So I'm not knocking them, it's just they don't work for me. The first is a bulb auger, and you can find these at major garden centers. You can find them at hardware stores, home improvement stores. The reason I don't use it is because our soil is so, it's not the perfect soil. It's got rocks, it's got stones. I've tried it and what happens is 
things start flying out at me and it's a little dangerous. It's a lot easier for me to do some manual digging. Otherwise, in some of the garden beds that I've built directly that have really good soil, this would be very easy. It's just, I'm used to digging. That's what I prefer, but it's a good tool. Okay. The second tool I use is this thing. They call it a planting tool. You can see it's even got dust on it. I bought this years ago and I don't know if I'm just not that talented to use it, if I'm too short to use it. It looks like a pogo stick, right? Doesn't that look like a pogo stick? So the whole thing is you're supposed to, you know, step on it and a little piece of dirt gets put up here when you push it down to the ground and it comes up and you stick the bulb in and then this will come back out. I found it more trouble than it was worth. It doesn't mean it's a bad product. I know a lot of people that do use these and they swear that it makes it very easy to get a lot of holes dug in a short amount of time. So I'll put a link to it below. You can see the one that I bought. It does work. It's just that I found it a little more, maybe I'm uncoordinated. It, it just was a little more work than I wanted to do. Again, I find digging is the easiest method for me. So next we come to the slightly controversial part of the video where I talk about soil amendments and fertilizers and do you need them? The answer in most cases is no. And what I'm talking about specifically is blood meal, bone meal, and bulb fertilizer. So maybe some of you use them or you know gardeners that use them. You really don't need them and in some cases it can cause more harm than good. Let me explain. So blood meal and bone meal are produced from animals. Because of this, both blood meal and bone meal can attract carnivores. While they may repel some critters, they will attract others looking for bones or blood to eat. Animals like raccoons and skunks and even dogs are attracted to these products. So gardeners will suggest putting these directly into the planting holes, but that's not a good idea either. Direct contact with these products and bulbs can cause bulb rot. I'm not kidding. So I know there's many gardeners out there that use blood meal and bone meal and they swear by it. And I know you're gonna tell me that you've used them, you've never had any problems, you have great results, never a problem with your daffodils. And I think that's wonderful, I really do. I'm just telling you what the daffodil experts say. And that includes the American Daffodil Society, it includes Brent and Becky's bulbs, and it includes color blends, which if you watch a lot of garden videos, a lot of gardeners seem to order their bulbs from color blends. So. I'm just letting you know what the experts say. And a few final points about blood meal and bone meal. Blood meal is very high in nitrogen, which will encourage your daffodils to produce way more leaves and fewer flowers. And bone meal is very high in phosphorus and calcium. Now most of our soils already have these elements in them and these two elements, phosphorus and calcium, they don't leach out of the soil. So if you feel your soil is lacking in these nutrients, do a soil test first before you spend the money on bone meal. Bulb fertilizer is another option, and I use bulb tone by Espoma, which contains many of the good elements of blood meal and bone meal, plus a lot of organic ingredients that release into the soil over time. So I have a separate video that is nothing but fertilizing your daffodils and bulbs. And I'll link to that at the end of this video and in the description box below so that you can see it because there's a lot to know about fertilizing. And the right time to do it actually is when they're in bloom. Because this little guy right here, he has everything he needs, nutrients, everything already stored up in this bulb. That's what they do in the ground year after year is once they're done blooming and you leave the green leaves on so that they get more nutrients, then they die off. But what's going on in the ground is they're not just sitting there, they're getting all the nutrients they need for the following year. So this little guy, when you buy him at the store or you order it from a bulb company, is already set, needs no fertilizer. The second thing is never, ever, ever have bulb fertilizer touch the bulb. You never wanna do that because that is also gonna cause the bulb to rot just like it would if you were using bone meal or blood meal. So this little guy, gets to go in the ground all by himself. So the next tip is one that gets covered in just about every single video, but I'm gonna cover it anyway because I have a little bit of a different spin on it. And that is, how do you plant your daffodil bulbs? What's the right side up? <laughs> so I know it can sound basic, but I wanna tell you something that you may not hear everywhere. So of course, the bottom part of the bulb, I'll show it to you here, the bottom part has roots 
and the top part is a comes to sort of a point and that's where all of the leaves and shoots and stems and flowers are going to come out of so everyone tells you plant it this way facing upright okay so they say make sure the roots are on the bottom and this is pointed skyward now here's my spin on it which will make things a little bit easier for you i'm not advocating just throwing these into the ground however if they turn on their side if somehow they get turned upside down they're still going to bloom somehow whether it's the intelligence inside this little bulb or it's mother nature what happens is they'll turn over time and you'll still get flowers so don't stress about it too much yes plant them this way but if they fall over if they get knocked this way somehow it's not a big deal they're still going to bloom it's good to know So this final tip I have is more answering a question that a lot of people have, which is, how do you know which way your daffodils are going to face when they're blooming? Well, I'll tell you. Usually, daffodils like to face southward. They like to face the sun. So if you plant a lot of daffodils, you look out your window, and they're all facing away from you, it's not that they don't like you, okay? So just know this. It's that your window is obviously northward of where you planted your daffodils. So you'll still see color. When you look out your window, you'll just have to get outside and walk around and enjoy them up close and in person, which is not a bad thing, especially with the daffodils that have nice scents. They have intricate colors and petals. It's beautiful to see up close. So in some cases, you may not have a choice. And in other cases, it's just good to know is that daffodils will always try to face southward to get the most sun that they can. So just keep that in mind when you're planting and get out there and look at them up close if you need to. Of course you need to, right? Everybody wants to. <laughs> so use these tips to make your daffodil planting easier in the fall, and then you'll enjoy a beautiful display in the spring. Watch this video next on fertilizing your daffodils so you learn all about that. And until next time, happy gardening. <laughs>